So there, there are two parts about Space Chain. So the first part is actually um, getting consensus over another blockchain inside of the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, so what you can do is you can do something uh, called blind merge mining. Uh, and I created kind of a method to do that with regular Bitcoin transactions, where essentially when you want to create a block on this other chain, which I call a space chain, you have to put the hash of that block into the Bitcoin blockchain, and you have to compete with others to put that hash there. And then whoever pays the highest uh, amount of fees, a Bitcoin fees to Bitcoin miners, they get to put their hash there. Um, and so this sort of simulates uh, Bitcoin's proof of work, uh, but inside of the Bitcoin blockchain for another chain. So given that you have this mechanism, uh, you now can create um, chains inside of the Bitcoin blockchain that basically don't require their own proof of work, but instead uh, they pay fees to Bitcoin miners and Bitcoin uh, miners, they turn those fees into into Bitcoin's proof of work. So it's sort of, um, you know, you could you, every every altcoin could theoretically do this, where instead of having their own proof of work, they just live inside of the Bitcoin blockchain. Uh, and it's all kind of under the umbrella of Bitcoin's proof of work. So that's the first step. But so far, what I've described is, is literally an altcoin. Right? You have just this completely different chain uh, with uh, where you still need to have some kind of native token inside of there. Uh, because if you don't have a token, uh, you can't do anything. Uh, and that's kind of the beauty of, of Bitcoin, right? where uh, the Bitcoin tokens themselves kind of act also as the mechanism to pay for fees to create transactions. Um, so that's where the part that you explained comes in. Um, so the way I solve this is with uh, what I call a perpetual one-way tag. And this is literally what you said. Uh, you can burn or destroy Bitcoins in order to create uh, what I call space coins. And this mechanism allows you to basically move your move from the Bitcoin blockchain to the space chain. And because you can always do this, because it's a perpetual peg, so meaning that if you want to do this like five years from now, uh, you, you can do it then, or if you want to do it right now, you can do it right now. Um, but you can never move back. Uh, this actually makes it so that these space coins are inferior to Bitcoin. And that is really important. Uh, because that basically makes it so that speculation is impossible. If you think this uh, space chain is amazing and very useful, there's still no reason why you would move all your Bitcoins over. That's still a terrible idea. Uh, really, if it's amazing and very useful, uh, all that you want is to just use it what it's good for. And in order to use it, you have to have at least some space coins. Um, so that's really uh, what the value of the space coins is. So the assumption is only if the space chain is useful and people actually want to put transactions on there, uh, then only then will there be demand for these coins. And this is very different from how altcoins function because an altcoin functions uh, more, uh, you know, similar to um, there, there's this idea that they think like, okay, well, in the future, lots of people are going to have uh, are going to use this chain. Therefore, there's going to be lots of demand for uh, these coins. Therefore, the value is going to go up. Therefore, I'm going to buy the token now when the value is still low. And then the price shoots up and people speculate and there's a pump and dump. So that's entirely impossible here. If you think in the future, lots of people are going to use the space chain and they're going to want to have these space coins uh, in order to pay for fees, there's no reason to buy them now. Uh, because there is no way to speculate on it. You can buy now one space coin for one Bitcoin, and you can do that five years from now. Um, so speculation is just impossible. 